the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the first Sunday of the blessed month of Baba, the second month in the Coptic calendar. And the Gospel, from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 12. It is about the great miracle when our Lord Jesus Christ healed the paralytic man spiritually as well as physically. This miracle also mentioned in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 9 and the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 5. It is a great miracle. And there are a lot of teaching in this great miracle. As some Mark mentioned in the gospel today, that he entered the city of Capernaum. And our Lord Jesus Christ took the city of Capernaum as his ministry headquarters. He was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, and took Capernaum, the center of his ministry. So he entered Capernaum many times at the headquarter. And when the people heard that he is in the house, and many of our early church fathers said, this is the house of St. Peter. Many people, when they heard that he is in the house, they gathered together, many people, to the extent that nobody else can enter the house even close to the door. And our Lord Jesus Christ started to teach and preach them And then some other people start to come among them, four gentlemen carry their friend who was very sick, paralytic, and they try to enter from the door they cannot. So they never give up. They claim the roof, open the roof. It was very primitive building, so it's easy to open the roof. And you look at Jesus, where is he? In the middle of the house. And he let them when their friend, the sick man, the paralytic, in front of our Lord Jesus Christ. And St. Mark said, when our Lord saw their face, he said to him, son, your sin forgiven to you. Some of the people came, not like the rest of the multitude, to hear the Lord and to believe in him and to live according to his commandments, but they came to criticize him and to try to find any fault in him. Some of the Pharisees and some of the scribes. So they said in their heart, without any loud voice, why this blasphemy? How come he said, son, your sin forgiven to you? Who can forgive sin except the God alone? Although they did not say anything, only reasoning in their heart, the Lord looked at them and said, why you are reasoning this in your heart? Which is easier, to say, son, your sin forgiven to you, or to say, arise, back up your bed, and go your way, or walk? Then he said, 
that you be able to know the Son of Man have authority to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic man, a riot, pick up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he arose, carry his bed, and went to his house. And most of the people, they were very surprised. And they glorified the Lord because they said, we never saw anything like that. This is the gospel of today. And you can see in the gospels, there are five characteristics. Of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, the divine God, the incarnate God, the head, and then the good multitudes who gather together to listen to him. Also some bad people, they are not just to come to listen to him, but to try to find some fault in him. This is the other group. And then the four friends and also the person who was paralytic. So this is the characteristics in this great miracle. If you listen carefully to the gospel, you can see this is representing any church, even our church in Cleveland, or any church in the Coptic church, or maybe any church in Christianity in general. In any church, you can see, of course, Christ the head of the church, and then you can see the multitudes, the body of Christ, the good people who come to listen and to live according to the Lord. Also, you may see some people not just to come to listen and to worship, but to criticize. Criticize the Pope, criticize the Bishop, criticize the priest, criticize the Sunday school teachers, criticize. They think that they know everything they are right and everybody else is wrong. Some people in many churches like that. And the other characteristics are the four friends who represent here the servants. Can be the pope, can be the bishop, can be the priest, can be some of these school teachers, can be youth leaders, someone who serve, have good faith in the Lord. And the last characteristic, of course, the paralytic man who was sick, and this one represents to all of us. This one represents to all of us. Because we are sick, generally speaking, spiritually, no one is without sin, even so, if his life a single day on earth. And many of us physically have some kind or different kind of disease, and so this person represents to all of us. Go back to the first characteristics, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he? Is God incarnate, the second person of the Holy Trinity, who came and saved us out of his great love. God so loved the world so that he gave his only begotten son. So everyone who believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The multitude who gather together represented the most of the people in the church. They came to listen to him. And I would like to emphasize about the word of God. When Christ is anywhere, we gather together to listen to him. When we attend the church, when we hear the sermon, when you hear the deacons read the selections, when you read the Bible at home, when you attend some of the meeting Bible study, and the question is, are we, are, are we anxious to hear the word of God to the extent that not to find any place in the church like the empty one over here, and the people start to come late, and some people, they don't care to come. Or we are like this multitudes who gather together to the extent there is no place even to the, close to the door. So we'd like to listen to the word of God 
and we say with David the prophet, I hide your word in my heart so I will never sin against you. خبأت كلامك في قلبي لكي لا أخطئ إليك. Now I would like to move to the four friends, the servant, and their friend, the sick person, the paralytic man. These are true servants. And most of us serve in the church in one capacity or the other. And we would like to listen and to learn from them. In any ministry, in any services, you may find some difficulties, some problems, and some crisis. And we have to learn from these four friends. They came, they found a problem. They carried their friends long way until they reached the house. They expected that they will enter right away, put the sick person in front of the law, but they cannot enter. It's not just like one person can squeeze and be in front, as some people do when we receive the blessing. So they never said, okay, we did whatever we can. What can I do? Abuna, don't ask me more than what I can. I came, the church was closed, six o'clock in Ashia, and then I left. Mumkin Abuna Yigi Masan 601. So they never give up. They look around the house. You see, there's a very primitive house in the village or the city of Kaprinahum. They claim the roof. Imagine four people with their friend in the bed, carry him, claim, and they went all the way to the roof and opened the roof. And then they laid him down in front of the Lord. Here, one important point. As a servant, we have to work together. One person cannot do it. Some people think that he can do it everything by himself or think that without him, nothing else will be happening in the church. Some people think so. And the four have to be very careful and work together with a good connection between one another. Like when we pray here, the deacons, this is the servant, we have to be very careful that we all say as if we are one person. Because this is the bed, they tied the four corners with a very good road, and they have to be together. They cannot be like that. You can feel it. So all together, work hard, harmony between one another at the servant of the Lord, this is why they were very successful to put him in front of the Lord. One important thing that St. John Chrysostom said about these four people, he said when they let him in front of the Lord, they said nothing. They said nothing. This is your role in the ministry if you are in, you and me, just to bring the person to the Lord, in front of the Lord. That's it. And then let the Lord do whatever he wants. Imagine if they said what they want in their heart. Please, Lord, heal this person physically. Okay, this is very easy. But when they put him in front of the Lord, the Lord gives them, and he always do that with us more than what expect. So they let him, and the Bible said, when Jesus saw their face, he said to the paralytic man, son, your sin forgiven to you. So their face. Your face can heal some people. Your servant can help some people. This is the power for face and intercession. Intercession. Yes, God can heal someone because of your prayer, because of your face. This is our belief. Jesus Christ, when he saw their face, he said to him, their face can be for the four and for this also, the paralytic man. He have face on God and also have face on his four friends. He have face on his four friends. 
It's not easy that to let someone carry you, even if they are four, and you are very sick, you cannot move paralytic. But he had faith in God, and he had faith in his friends. This is how we should be tied in our ministry. When he saw their face, he said, Son, your sin forgiven to you. Of course, this is the fourth characteristic that the other, like Pharisees and the scribes, who said in their heart, why this blasphemy? The reasoning in their heart. And our Lord Jesus Christ, because he is God incarnate, proved to them his divinity through many things. One of them, he knew what is in their heart. The reasoning, imagine if you are in the church and think, Abuna, I'm going to yani, longer his sermon a little bit more today, and then the Lord know what you think about it. And then the Lord asked them, why you are reasoning this in this your heart? Whatever easier to say, son, your sin forgiven to you, or arise and take up your bed. And he said, of course, this is the first point the Lord revealed his divinity to them and to all of us. Yes, he is God incarnate. He knows everything. He is everywhere. He is equal with God the Father. He is the one who said, who saw me see the Father. I am and the Father are one. And then he proved to them more about his divinity when he asked them the question, what they kept quiet and they never talk. Do you know? Which is easier to say, forgive your sin or arise and take up your bed? But to know that the Son of Man has authority over sin, arise, pick up your bed and go. Of course, nobody see any sin come out of this man and left him. But they can see something to prove that the Lord have the power to forgive sins. Arise. You know, here, to prove the divinity of the Lord, the Lord they never pray. It's not like St. Peter or St. Paul or Baba Carolus or any saint when he pray, ask God to heal one person or another. It is an order. Arise. Even when he raised ladders from dead, his ladder come out. Order. He is the source of life. He is God incarnate. And when the person walk in front of them, they saw his divinity in a very unique way. He saw, they saw his divinity in a very unique way. You know, whatever in their heart, he can heal sick spiritually as well as physically. And then the rest of the multitude, this is the end of the gospel, verse 12. They were all marvelous and give glory to God because they never saw something like that before. Where we are from these miracles, how can we read in it? The way we go through the gospel from verse 1 to 12, you can do that every day when you read the Bible. Don't you just read it, but think about it. See what is the main characteristics in these chapters and where you are from each one of them. Are you from the multitude who came to listen to the Lord or from the other who came to criticize him? Do we have faith like the four and the paralytic man? Do we believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is God incarnate, very powerful, who can do anything? All this question we can, and when the Lord do and continue to do something like that in our life, do we give him glory, as it mentioned at the end of the gospel today? There is a lot of we can learn. Pope Shenouda used to say, those who used to put everything in God's hand 
They see God's hand in everything. هؤلاء الذين اعتادوا أن يضعوا كل شيء في يد الله اعتادوا أن يروا يد الله في كل شيء. Glory be to God forever and ever.